think those are areas that we need to do a better job at. The kids came in yesterday, did a great job on Own It Sunday, owning everything that we put on tape, the good and the bad. And uh, we had a great session of growth yesterday on the film, good shakeout run. And the guys are in a great spirits, great attitude to move forward and on to Howard. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, there's moments and there's spurts on both sides of the ball, really all three phases, where there's there's greatness that is there and that we need to consistently pull that out of the guys and we need to consistently have that performance. So I wouldn't say that one side's ahead or behind or anything like that. Again, I was pleased overall the the number of – of loafs that we had, the lack of effort plays was way, way down, which was great. You know, so the guys are playing with enthusiasm, they're playing with energy, and I think that showed when, when big plays happened on our sidelines and things like that. Um, so we just need to consistently execute our job, and, and guys need to know that their brother next to them is going to do his part. So all they need to worry about is their 111th, and we'll be just fine. With the rough second half, having that so early in the season, what does that mean for you to be able to pick up? Because you're only through playing the season tendencies and stuff that happens, be able to. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the way that we started in the second half, you know, was much more of some self-inflicted wounds. You know, we, we threw a high ball that led to an interception, you know, and then we were in the proper places defensively and we just didn't bring our legs on tackles. So we, we need to evaluate ourselves first and foremost as, as a staff to make sure that we're putting the kids in position throughout the course of the week in preparation so that we're giving them the looks that they're going to see and we're giving them the necessary tools, the techniques, and the fundamentals so that they can be successful. Um, had a great conversation with Coach Kaufman yesterday, and he said it best to where, you know, we fundamentally believe in fundamentals and our fundamentals need to be better you know when our fundamentals broke down that's when those big plays happened and those plays happened in the second half in in all three phases of the game and uh, when we're right and we do execute our fundamentals and guys do their job and don't worry about doing anything more we have great success so those are things that we need to hone in on this week and, and really take a step back to get back to the basics of fundamentals and, and we'll put together a good plan to put our kids in the best position to succeed come Saturday. Uh, who are the guys in both Yeah, I mean, I, I knew and I was pleased with the way the offensive line played. I mean, we only gave up one sack, and for having numerous guys that were making their, their first career starts and for guys that were playing new positions, even though they had started before, um, they, they did a decent job all around. Um, the one guy that I was really pleased with was Julian Sams for a true freshman who, you know, is still a little bit undersized and probably could be benefiting from a redshirt year. He came out and played with great pad leverage. The stage didn't look too big for him, and he competed his tail off and was really, really pleased with the effort that he played with. And then I know it showed up on the stats, and, and you guys talked to him after the game, but Jim Jones played a really good game. He needs to be cleaner and needs to take better care of his body in terms of hydration so that he doesn't cramp out and miss a few plays and things like that. Yeah. But you know, he, he, he played well, and, and he rose to the occasion, which I was pleased with. So, so 24-hour rule is basically win, lose, or draw. Whatever happens on game day, we have 24 hours to, to dwell on what happened, right? So you have 24 hours to, to lick your wounds if you lose. You have 24 hours to celebrate your victories. And when you win, you need to celebrate because the victories come few and far between in life. So you need to take time to appreciate that. But when the 24 hours is done, that's done. And you can't look back because what's done is done. You can't go back. You need to be present in the here and the now and, and dominate the next thing that is coming down the pipe to help you prepare for the next battle that's coming. And scouting with Howard, team played them last year, obviously you weren't here. Have you kind of leaned on the guys at all? With I mean, obviously the team, both you and Ken and Howard are different, but have right. you leaned on the guys a little bit to kind of get that information that they Last year. You know, yesterday was everything that we were talking about with Illinois and cleaning that up. We didn't even address Howard with the guys yesterday. Today's their day off, so guys have just come through to get treatment and things like that. The, the coaches are doing a great job game planning right now, and we're leaning heavily on what they put on tape um, on Saturday against Ohio. Obviously, they did some very nice things, and it was a, a really, really good football game that was well fought on both sides, and they had some tremendous success on, on offense, and they did some really good things on defense. It's a little bit different than what they did a year ago, so there's been some changes that have been made over there from schemes and personnel. So we're going to lean heavily on that tape and, and build our plan off of that. And the Mac on its own, and a lot of teams, the teams that were supposed to win won by a lot. And 
teams that went in and played Power Five conferences, pretty much everyone held their own. What does it yeah. say about the MAC as a whole? Right? It's a great league. Uh, to me, it is the the best Group of Five league that you could potentially you know play in, and, and it's a spot to where you can go toe for toe and, and trade punches with anyone, anytime, anywhere. And that's a great opportunity that we have here at Kent with the non-conference schedule that we play, to where we can go and, and we can battle and we can have a lot of fun playing our style of football. And it doesn't suit everyone else, but it suits us. It suits our kids, and it gives us an opportunity to to win. And we need to do a better job finishing so that we can win. So playing three power five conferences, power five teams with non-conference schedule is what you want. Uh, it's an opportunity that we have in front of us, and it's something that was set. Uh, uh, it was laid out well before I got here, and I embraced the opportunity and, and the challenges that, that come ahead with it. And with Lee, you kind of mentioned after the game that you saw some things you like, saw some things you didn't like. After going back and watching the tape, is that still the same feeling? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, his. Each individual's personal play was kind of a microcosm, I guess, of the statements that I've made about the game as a whole. There's things that they're doing that are really, really good. And Woody did some really, really good things. You know, he, he did a fabulous job on the touchdown throw that he threw to Mike to where his feet are in rhythm. He, he, you know that he has a grasp and a command of what he's doing on that play. There's other plays where you can tell he looks like a kid who's making his first collegiate FBS start, and, and that's okay. That's to be determined, you know, and, and to be expected, rather. It's no different than when you finally get that driver's license and you get to take the car out by yourself for the very first time. That You might dent the fender a little bit, but it's going to be okay as long as you can buff it out and, and Dad doesn't know about it. You know, you just can't go and total the car. And, and, and I think that kind of sums up with what he did. You know, he did some really good things and kept it in between the lanes and made the tires sing at times. And there's some other times where he bumped out the fender, but, but it's okay. We'll give him the keys again, and, and he'll continue to grow and develop and be better at his craft. And establishing the running game, is that going to be one of the things you kind of try to do against Howard to kind of hit that? I mean, with the, the way the game was, it kind of took a back seat. Was that one of the things you want to do against Howard? It's something we want to do every single day. Every single day when we go out to preparation and practice a game, we want to establish the run. It, it's Everything starts with being able to run the football. Everything starts with being able to stop the run, and everything starts with being able to cover kicks. Those are the things that define true toughness when it comes to playing on the football field. So well, that's going to be a point of emphasis regardless of who our opponent is. And for you, that first game, to be able to look down the sideline and see a staff that you put together playing at that stage and succeeding, what, I mean, what does that mean for you? Well, we didn't succeed because we're still 0-1, but we had some good moments. Uh -huh. um, but it was good that we, we, we did some good things. We had some bright spots. And we need to be able to clean up ourselves as a staff as well because the, the mistakes that the kids made were a direct reflection of the lack of preparation that we had as a staff and that we need to do a better job. And there's some things that we need to tighten up within our ranks so that we can lead the kids in the appropriate manner and take ownership of that as a staff, which we have and we will and we'll address and we'll go forward and we'll be better for our kids so that they can be in a better position to succeed, highlight their strengths, and, and allow them to, to have and feel the joy of victory because as good as people feel around here right now, we're 0-1. One, we're, we're one. We didn't win, and we need to continue to get better so that we can win a football game. Can you talk about the first quarter, fourth and ninth play, and the momentum that that seemed to create for the rest of the half? Yeah, you know, obviously there was, a, there was an injury with, with Derek Adams, and we're in a position there in the game where we need to create a spark, and we talked to the kids a lot about that. You know, we were going on this trip, and we're going to be in every single game, and we call it to win it, you know. And, and so it was a statement to where words are a little bit cheap unless you follow them through with action. So I think that was a, a good way and an easy way to tell the kids early on in our relationship for them to see what it was like because the same way that we were assessing and evaluating our kids, there's no doubt that our kids were looking at us and evaluating us of how we were going to call it, and is that just lip service, or does Coach really truly mean that? And so it was an opportunity where we picked a spot and not to be reckless but to be calculated. It was a good calculated shot. Worked out well, led to some points, and, and that led to a little bit of momentum that we could build off of. Is Derek, do you think he's is he going to play on Saturday? Or is it still it's still a day to day decision. You know, he's getting better each and every single day, but we just got to see where it's at as he continues to progress with his rehab. On the other side, in the third quarter, there it seemed like the interception is what really created some momentum for Illinois. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you wish they would have responded a little bit better, and we addressed it. That, you know, uh, one of our goals and kind of the identity that we want to create is that we're always going to go and answer a score with a score, regardless of how that happens. You know, every single time that we take the field offensively, we should have the assumption that we're going to go down and we're going to score, we're going to execute our job, and when we do that efficiently, we make the proper decisions, we play with great pad level, and we, we win with our feet, first and foremost, then, then we'll be in position to have success, you know. So, um, obviously, you, you don't want to start a half that way. You don't want, you need to take care of the 
football, and, and it's something that, you know, at the end of the day, the, the turnover battle was a wash because the last interception, uh, I credit Woody for extending the play and giving the play a chance, you know, so to me, that's a good, hezzy football play. You know, that the first interception, he just kind of got his shoulders up and, 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 you know, sailed it a little bit, but again, that's a correctable that through fundamentals, we'll keep that front shoulder down, we'll drive through our back arch, and we'll be in business. After that pick, you came over and said something to him. Was, what did you say? What I said exactly, I don't know, but it was probably something along the lines of keep your front shoulder down, drive through your back arc, trust your fundamentals, you know, because it, it's it's much more about him feeling comfortable with what he's doing and knowing that that was the right decision so that he wasn't second guessing his decision making. It was just a matter of lex, well, lack of execution, which is something that, again, across the board, I thought our decision making was good. It's just a matter of, okay, a fundamental breakdown to being either a step, a false step, us not bringing our feet, things along those lines that we can correct. And when we correct them, we have more than enough any game that's on our roster. And he kind of mentioned it with the momentum shift in the second half. When he drove the ball, all, well, the offense drove the ball all the way down the field, then he you know, scored the touchdown on the run, and then you had the uh, unsportsmanlike penalty there. What you, would you kind of tell him after that? I, I told him and our whole team knows that there's no one on the team, there's no one in the family, whether it be players, coach, support staff that's with us on the, the, the road or on the bench that's worth a 15-yard penalty because we go down and score, and then that 15-yard penalty leads to us having to kick off from the 20, which leads to them, if I'm not mistaken, starting to drive on the 42, and it's all intertwined because then they go down and score as well. So everything's interconnected, and, and we have to make sure that we learn how to celebrate, you know, and, and that we're celebrating with the big guys up front that actually make those plays happen for us and that we're celebrating as a family. And if we get an unsportsmanlike conduct because we have too many guys celebrating together and we're celebrating as a family, I can live with that. But if one guy throws the ball up in the air to draw attention to himself, I'm not okay with that. Early in the week, are there some strengths you can identify from, from Howard that you're going to be looking at closely this week? <laughs> I mean, their throwing game, when, when you throw for the number of yards that they threw for, and then they're still also balanced because they rush for over 160 yards offensively. They're very balanced, so they present a lot of threats in that way. Their skill guys have size and speed. One of their wide receivers is 6'3", 210, if I'm not mistaken, and can and really stretch the field. Defensively, they are a long, physical bunch that talks with their pads, and they play the game the right way. So I'm expecting another four-quarter battle of physical football, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Simple enough. Thank you, Coach. Always good to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you as well.